this painting comes under uh, I'm fixing it. Yeah, I think it comes under I'm fixing it. It's a, uh, here's the uh, sketch. There are two sketches. This one here is really where this was going and I got stuck. And then I found this sketch right here. And I think I'm going to combine the two. Uh, this is Point Lobos. Uh, well, it's not obvious to some of you, but it's Point Lobos again. And, uh, and the gallery in Carmel would probably like it if I finish it and do a decent job. So I'll be looking at these two sketches. The change I'm going to make is that I'm going to bring uh, this tree down uh, like I've got them showing in this sketch right here. But I'm going to do it over on this side. That's one thing I'm going to do. This one, which is really where this was going, uh, doesn't have this this bay right here. And this one ended up having a lot of the pollen and uh, things that came from pine trees floating in the water. I don't know if that'll stay, but I think I'm going to add underneath this, uh, this mass, this uh, kind of a, a large rocky shore thing where the water ends up coming in here. So this is what I'm going to be looking at. And uh, let's see, where do I put them? Well, I'm going to put this one here. And I'm going to put this one here. There. They may fall off, but uh, yeah, that's okay. This worries me, but I think if I put another tree here uh, and kind of cut it down a little bit. This right here is, is actually a tree that has fallen over, which is very common at Point Lobos, and, uh, and this is just the crown of that pine that's still laying here, but I think I'll be putting that, uh, let me just block that in. So that'll be coming up and about here, yeah, I think the base of that little outcropping is going to be about here, yeah, here. And because the sun is coming from this direction right here, it's pretty dark, but I'll lock it in dark to begin with. And then I'll, I'll put in some highlights. So I need that trunk there. Yeah, it's going to fall. I'll keep it there so I can pull it out when I need it or want it. This is going to be here. The tree trunk will still go there. Yeah. Okay, so it's here. I think I'll come in a little bit more this way. And if there are photographs, I haven't found them. Uh, I've taken thousands of photographs of Point Lobos, or hundreds at least, and I don't know if I can find it. I probably can, but it'll take hours, so for a while here, I'll work like this. Now let me uh, put in a little outline of where the crown of that tree is going to be. It's going to be kind of in this area here. There, I'm going to make it, let's make it a nice dark green, so it'll be here. That's not the color it will be when we're done, but at least I'll know where it is. And where the shade, the mass underneath it is, and you know, in the next 10 minutes of I decide, no, this is still not working out. I'll probably just skip the whole thing. So let me go make this a little lighter. This is a cliff on the other side. It's getting more sunlight. Here. All right, here. It'll be darker, much darker on the bottom. Payne's gray. Here. Yeah. 
here. Okay. Make things stick here. Here. And this, instead of having this here, it looks like it's coming out of the rock. So let me get rid of stuff there. All right, so I'm gonna put, water is gonna be here. And, and yeah, there's gonna be water kind of around this area. And I think that branch is going to be here. It's going to be here. Here. And then, as you've been watching, I kind of uh, make a design for that little crown. It's relatively small. It's here. There. Back to the green so we know what it is. There. Trunk. All right, and then since the sun is coming from here, that um, here is going to be much greener. It's going to be much punchier green because sun's coming from there. Plus, values are so close right here that uh, changing changing the uh, the value of this trunk up here is going to end up helping separate this from what's up here. It does get darker near the water, no matter what's going on. So here is a little more gray, and that's okay. And it's gonna get much lighter on top because there's even more sunlight coming through here. One of the things that is con so convenient, and maybe that's all it is, but outlining what masses are where is a, been a big help. In other words, we know we know we see this mass here. There's no doubt about where it is or where it is. This mass is here, and we're going to keep it open on this side, and it continues down below. Here with shadows more dark, much more dark, so down in the foreground here, because that's where this uh, part of the tree is. It obviously wasn't a dead tree. Uh, maybe I'll make it into a dead tree, but the darks will be down below where the shadows would be here. Okay, and we've got. And this is going to end up having to, so, so it separates from this, it ends up having to be much, much, much darker, or I'll make it lighter. And I'll try both to see which way. And there is the mass that's here, the mass that defines this uh, pine that has gone down. And of course, later on, there'll be um, some trunks in there that will be showing, you know, here. This is going to be a trunk as well. It's not going to be a green trunk, but it's going to be a trunk. Anyway, that's coming down the line. So that's here. Yeah. Maybe, I think that line, I already brought it down 
I think I'm going to bring it down even further. Here I use that green, but I'm going to change. There, I'm going to bring that line down here. Here, the water doesn't go all the way to the very end. It kind of stops right about here. And I've got to be happy here. Or I said also that I was going to bring down uh, that. Tr and I'm going to do that. Yeah. Again, I kind of put the design in first. And then I kind of decide, yeah, that works. get partially off here and then I just kind of decide this is what's going to go again no photographs all I'm going by is the little sketches on the sides here but I like the idea of having more yeah and I'm gonna go lighter because the Sun is really hitting it Sun's from behind us. Okay. It's going to go even lighter in it. Hopefully we'll end up looking more like a pine, but even now it's not that critical. It's going to be too light. Yeah, here. Yeah, I'm going to have to look carefully at it because that's mostly what they have out here is cypress, junipers, pines. And that's what is was, but I can make it into anything I want. Thank goodness. That dark line around the mass will eventually disappear or close to it. For now, it is just to help me decide where am I, what am I doing, and what this object is so that I can, I can move on here. I'm going to, nope, lighter. I think this brush is going to go into the trash real soon. I do like the darks on the bottom that really belongs there because that's how uh, usually when you're when you do looking at rocks in the ocean they, they end up uh, pretty dark where the water hits them pretty dark not dark 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 but it's true there okay Well, eventually this will have a drop shadow on it. There. I don't like, really I'm happy with that, but that's okay. putting some sky holes in it it's that that mass is just too large or too solid it's not too large but too solid and that's the point is that I want to make it lighter it's just too heavy up there and uh, here and uh, there all right Yeah. 
here. That's uh, Carmel would be over in this area. Yeah, I mean, it's just a few miles up the road from where this is going on. Here. All right, I'm not, I'm gonna make this lighter. Let's see. One of the things that I have in this sketch here is all that reddish. It's, it's just, uh, what is it? It is stuff that's coming from the pine trees. It must be during the springtime. I don't have a date on that sketch. So I'm gonna put, I had some of it in here. And I'm gonna put it back. Not as much as I, and that's awfully red, 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 but I'm going to lighten it up. Here. There. Okay. I think I'm going to end up putting a, another tree in this and the reason is that uh, yeah there's a little bush tree in here already which is fine that's here let me give it some a little bit of a sunlight flashy sunlight it's here just like this Yeah, in fact, instead of having that tree, I'm going to say tree is here. See how important it is? And I'm going to make that part of the uh, part of the rock. And the rock is here. Yeah, I like that. I think that'll be good. Trunks will be identified as they go into this area here here we you know that I don't like this shape <laughs> I don't like that shape I really don't uh, I don't think it's the, well, the value may have something to do with it, but here, here, uh, I don't know, I need to pop in more, take out some of the greens here. I um, have worked on it a little bit. The gardener was doing the blowing leaves away on the next door, so I thought I'd stop recording. Here's um, what I have decided on is to move this out, make it, it like this here. This is a Monterey pine. They've got these puffy little balls on top of their, uh, you know, here, here, here. So I decided to keep the red, moved it out a little bit. Uh, I've decided to make this a rock area, like in this study right here. And uh, see, there's another little uh, little tree here. I may do that. And the reason I would do it is because what am I going to do with all those water? Uh, the interest really is in the foreground. The stuff back here is supporting cast and. And so uh, I think most of my interest is going to be right here. Yeah, this will help and be good, but I may end up putting another uh, tree in here. I've added this island. It's neither one and then the island. Just the rock out here, water will be swirling around it. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I, I had this green in the beginning. I decided to make it more orange. Uh, it'll go better with, uh, I think I didn't want it I don't know, this orange, yellowy orange, this reddish orange. 
uh, the sandy, rocky area down below. I thought this color would go better than the bright green that I had. I will put in some very light green. I think in this study right here, these trees had some very light trunks and very bright green. And instead of doing another tree here, I may just end up adding some light green down here. In fact, I'm pretty sure I, I may. Let's see what else. Um, I still have made the water a little darker, but that's just a test to see, will I like it? Will it work better dark instead of light? And uh, now that's about where I've gone. Uh, that's where I've been. And uh, I'm just gonna continue for a little bit more. Yeah, here's that. Here. Anyway. Yeah, there's interest over there. Not a lot of waves are probably blocked by another rock out here. Yeah, that light, light green. I really need that nice light green here, here. That's it here. Yeah, that light green will work. I think. Let's see what else. Brilliant green from Utrecht, and then. Yeah, kind of, yeah, that's okay. I needed something there, I don't know. All I had was the rock going down to the bottom and that didn't appeal to me. So this, this business here could be just a uh, new growth there. Yeah, again, this, I could have a little bit of green left on that because, um, well, let's see. Just, yeah. Oh God, I've got to experiment to see what will I like. The study is so uh, minimalist that a little bit of green on there, some orange in there will be fine. The nice thing about the studies are it makes me feel wonderful when I'm out in nature painting on plein air, but then uh, you really aren't, you don't really have a solid, uh, this is what it looked like, kind of a, a feedback when you look at the study and decide you're going to make a, uh, uh, you're going to make a, an enlargement from it. And so uh, what I'm thinking about now is where else do I put that bright green? I, light, I lit this up a little bit. Uh, I'm still having to, this is going to take some more work and this is not done, but I'm wondering, do I want to repeat that green on the bottom here? Again, all the study had is what I, what was there, the tree that had fallen over, uh, the background, this tree here. And then I started that and you saw it to begin with and I didn't like what was going on. This is almost the identical location right around walk on the bluffs in Point Lobos, and I decided to incorporate what I've had here too. They have more grass, and, uh, and I've just made a rock out of it. Foliage on this hill is going to end up being more bluish green anyway, and the reason is it's far away, there's tons of atmosphere in between myself and these trees and this bush, and these bushes and the vegetation over here. So it's back, it's not that critical. But I'm still wondering, what am I gonna do with the water? Do I make it brighter or darker? My instinct says, I've got a lot of darks here. I don't wanna over punch that water. So I'm gonna take you know, cobalt blue, plenty of it. I'm just gonna put in some, and then some yellow to Go to the green side to there. And this is what I have. More green, more yellow, making it more green. Yeah. Yeah. I know the original sketch had that cerulean blue back here, but I think I like the darker water better. And uh, it'll 
change, but I think I, I think I like that better. I think cobalt blue, some yellow to make it kind of an aqua. All right, well, let's leave it like this for now until I change my mind, which may happen. One of the other things I've done here that's something because uh, this sketch, from the sketch to the uh, to the actual painting, uh, one of the things that I have done is taken liberties. There was no rock here. I've added a lot of paint. That's the one thing that makes me feel good about where I am with this painting. The heavy use of paint. Um, I like that. I mean, it's just, I don't know if it's liberating or if it's just, uh, I like heavy paint, but I don't always paint with heavy paint, even though I probably should, because it is so wonderful, is heavy impasto paint. And while I'm doing this, let's see, I'm going to make the sky a lot lighter, but uh, don't much lighter. Sky. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, maybe this will turn out into something, but believe it or not, I never know before I start. I think this may be nice, and then it turns out into something that the gallery, uh, I can't take to the gallery. <laughs> and, uh, but they do like coastal scenes because that's where the gallery is up in Carmel. And that is something that they, and I love painting it. That's why I keep going to Point Lobos, not just because the gallery is there, but because I, I love uh, the Pacific and Point Lobos. And so the gallery likes that. I like it. And it, uh, and so I've done a lot of concentration on that uh, part of the California. Yeah, I'm going to go back to the sky to see, am I going to be happy with something in the sky? I said much brighter. Mix it with the blue that I had there. Yeah. Yeah. I love painting into things like this thing right here. It ends up creating a mass that I uh, looks natural and it looks like, uh, yeah, well, I mean, it looks like a mass that I had designed, but it ends up being something, an accident. And of course, because I enjoy doing it. I'll be doing it over and over again and things will change repeatedly. It'll never stay the same. One of the reasons I guess uh, I'm never really done with my paintings is because I always think there's more. I can I can do more with this painting. I can end up making it into something that I will love a lot better than I do now. And so that's one of the reasons I certainly do the others. The other reason is that I keep thinking, uh, gee, is that, uh, how can I improve on that branch, on that sky, on the color and the water, like I'm doing now? But it's not like taking a photograph and just kind of deciding, well, I'm going to make a copy of this. Don't get me wrong. I mean, when I take a photograph and all the elements of a good composition are there, I certainly am not going to say, well, I'm going to start inventing things. Uh, but in cases like this, uh, where I don't have a photograph, I'm going to go look to see if I do, but I don't think I do. Um, and because I don't have a photograph, I do have to be inventive. I have to try to decide, what's that mass? I like, remember this was bright green. I've made it more of an orangey green. I like it better. Still not quite sure. The mass is better from what it was. And here I just add these little branches to stop the eye from totally going off. I'll probably put a, a green thing up there anyway. Yeah, punchy green. Yep. So I'm, one of the reasons I like going over and over, I go over and over it is because I keep saying, 
there's more to this painting than what I've so far uh, included, and so I need to I need to get back into it and uh, do something else with it to make me happy. And boy, I tell you, being happy is one of the t with my art is with my work with my paintings is going to be is one of the toughest things that I have to think about because I'm rarely happy. I'm rarely I'm not not that I'm not a happy person, but I, I'm never uh, satisfied, I guess is the better word. I'm rarely, rarely satisfied with what I'm doing. The reason I keep going back into it over and over, that branch, that's, that line, that whatever it is, I can improve on that. It'll, it'll, it'll be a better painting if I do that. And that's kind of the rationale. So I'm not uh, terribly disappointed. But there's still a lot of work to be done. I do like to mix up my strokes like I'm doing here. And at this stage, I do a lot of stuff like that because, um, because I want to see the effect of it. And uh, will it make a painting that I'm going to enjoy? And will some buyer enjoy it too? All part of the whole thing. I'm not doing this just even though I've got dozens and dozens of paintings hanging on the wall at home. Every, every one of them is for sale. Uh, and I tried to, I went to the framer today and had them uh, make a couple of frames uh, for paintings that has my brother's frames on it. I do want to keep those for a while. But uh, anyway, uh, I think I think I like that sky better. Yeah. Here. I think that blue gray needs to go. Even though I like that dip, even though I like that dip, I'm going to leave it. Yeah. I like the darker water. Um, I think I need more punchy green over here, but I'm st it's starting to come together and I'm I'm not terribly disappointed. So far, so good. But there's always a chance to ruin it. And if anybody can do that really well, it's uh, Carl Dimpwolf. Anyway, let me take a little break. I will, when the time comes, go over this rock area here and put some branches in it got one there but it gets lost because of all the heavy paint that's in there one of the things i do want to change is that this orange stuff comes all the way down here and i am going to change that to uh, more of a water color a water meaning there's water here yeah i didn't want that orange to come all the way underneath and in places the water kind of peeks through. If I remember right, uh, and that's just my memory, it ended up having kind of a white line around it. it blossoms, it's really strange. I've seen it a number of times, but I've never been able to figure out what the heck that is. It sure defines the mass really nice. Anyway, more, less, uh, I said I was going to put some green up here just to stop the eye from totally leaving. You know, here. I had that trunk kind of go off. And I'm always trying things before it's actually time. In other words, I'll, I'll definitely put that branch in there and then I'll have to redo it five times. But that's the way it goes. I don't know what this smudge is up here. They're the foothills that are burned and uh, don't have a lot of, this actually would be green under normal times, but it's pretty far away and so uh, I'm leaving it uh, the blue color for now, but I'll change it if it needs to be. 
they have their trunks there and I probably should make them kind of highlight them like uh, all kinds of trunks, vegetation, things that have died, things that are brand new. Yeah, yep, I'll do a stroke like that and I say, yeah, that'll work. I like that. That'll work. Or, nope, I'll go. Yeah, I am curious to find a photograph, but I've seen this rock and I've painted it a number of times and so I will put some light grassy green. There are ranches here that um, that are growing cattle. So there's some green left to pick up the green here and here. Not solid dark green, but it's just a kind of a, a ranch green, like, yeah, that something can live on the stuff that's there. I'm gonna have to look at the horizon line too. I don't know if there are buildings there or trees there. I can't remember if I can find just a general photo of the area. I do, I will put in a few highlights where water is splashing and stuff, not everywhere. Uh, again, I put that blue underneath here and I'm wondering if, uh, if a brighter color is what's required. Again, I do experiment. I try this, I try that. It works, it doesn't work. And uh, I certainly enjoy that more than copying something. And the reason is it becomes mine. I didn't just copy something, and I may have copied it beautifully, but that's not what I like to do. I like to kind of come up with my own, my own thing, uh, my only real, my own reality, really, truthfully. Yeah, I'm gonna not increase the amount of yellow which made it that color that it is. Yeah, I can't really see the difference. That's a shame. That's a shadow from this tree. I don't know, I've had the shadow on the other side too, because the sun is coming directly from behind us. And yeah, I've had it on here and it's okay. I don't wanna make too much of a point of it. It just seems a little trite. One of the things I will do is I will take uh, uh, a brush full of paint and I will go uh, and I'll put my strokes all kinds of ways because trees here, they end up having uh, bark that's coming off. So having, mixing up your strokes is something I often do, often, often, often. Changing the color a little bit here and there. Yeah. Yeah, just, it adds, I'm just breaking up this large mass that's going up into the sky. Um, here, I'm gonna probably darken it a little bit. It seems that if there is something above it, then it would end up darkening it just a hair. Yeah, but then I'm gonna make it lighter on the bottom. And I, and I, and my, and the color of those trunks is gray. Gray, but how gray? Yeah, I think this trunk was really light. I mean, really light, in fact. Where is that sketch? It's right here. Yeah, this was really, really light. And so maybe this can go lighter and that can too. The only, I'm a little nervous about making this lighter. And you ask me why? Yeah, a line or two is okay. A line here.
Nope, I don't like that. Yeah. Yeah, line is okay. All of a sudden I'm looking at, <laughs> that's all I end up doing. I'm looking here, looking there. I see this orangey line and it's kind of mush now because of uh, the line, the white line I try to put around it, but yeah. I may end up putting that back later and maybe not. Yeah. I think I'll put a little line of, uh, of a little, there's no high seas right here. It's all pretty, pretty calm, but separating the water from the rock with a little bit of a sparkle right there is going to be something that I think I'd be interested in. And that's for now. And will I be after I'm done? Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, yeah. Here, I'm going to go back to Cerulean for the shadow that's or for the water color right here. There is also a nice light sand visible in the water. In fact, on this very beach, maybe this very spot at Point Lobos, I've seen, uh, and it's so isolated, you really can't get down there. In fact, they don't want you to get down there. That uh, there was a, uh, a, a mother seal with its baby right here. I mean, it was so private and so uh, uh, inaccessible uh, that uh, I, I find, yeah, yeah, that's fine, that's all right. Anyway, I'm going to pop in more lights in the area here. Here. Yeah, do it on this trunk too. You know, and then when it dries, <laughs> I'll scrape it because I say it's too much or it's not enough or whatever. Yeah, this is that fallen tree. Oh, they do have winds up here that are, that are destructive. And, uh, Things do fall over, but because it's a natural, natural, national state preserve, they don't really do much. They kind of leave things where they are, unless it's in the path where you're supposed to be walking or your car driving, they'll end up be uh, taking out or cutting it off. But basically they leave just about everything that, uh, that falls over. So that's, uh, it's that way in a bunch of the parks including uh, Yellowstone. Boy, I tell you, uh, they when uh, that, like that fire, they haven't cleaned that up they had there years ago. I mean, an enormous fire. Burned, I don't know, 50,000 acres or 100,000. It was enormous. But they, they let nature take its course, which means that they don't go in and try to help out or, or clean it up. This is how it is. If a baby buffalo calf falls through the water uh, in the wintertime and the mother can't help it, they will, uh, they will not go and rescue it. It's just part of nature. But they will stock the rivers so that the fishermen come back. They will do that. so far away. I, I, I'm going to see if I can find a picture of the rock formations. Not that they have to follow the rock formations, and I want to make this lighter. So I'm just going to take a little bit of... And I don't want it lighter everywhere, but I do want it lighter. Yeah, it wasn't the same color everywhere. Here. You know, I don't know. One of the things that bothers is this line here and this line here. I may end up making this sweep out like it's here, but I'll think about that for a while. And the reason I don't like that is because of those, those repeating 
white these lines here it's like they repeat this line and the one on the bottom so things you know uh, I think it there's you there's more tension if I don't do that and it's uh, you, plus the only thing that's driving my eye is this and it goes here uh, if I make this into a into a path again to get the eye to go into the rest of the paintings that would be nice too anyway I think I'm gonna take another break here is uh, my Lobos again, the 16 by 20 that I've been working on. And uh, I did find a photo. Here's the original photo uh, from Point Lobos. This is this area right here is this business back here. I've painted Point Lobos many times. I've told you that before, I believe. And, and so I hadn't, the only thing I was looking at was not the photograph, but I was looking at the study. In fact, I was looking at two studies. This one here, which has a larger, which has a, another kind of a, an outcropping that kind of covers some of this background right here. I was thinking of using that earlier, but then decided against it, but I may change my mind again. And this one right here, which I think is really uh, the one that this this is this view. This one is nearby, and I I'm using it to see if I can make a decent painting out of this. I guess one of the reasons I haven't fa finished this in the past is because, uh, again, if I were making a copy of the photograph that I showed you, I would have been done by now. But I don't do that. I just don't do that. I kind of take what's in front of me and try to make a painting out of it. Uh, I'm trying to uh, rearrange masses, and uh, and just, and and I think that's what uh, that's what makes my work a little bit different. Uh, and so I've been thinking about this painting. Oh, in fact, I think I mentioned I've painted here before. I brought a uh, here's an 18 by 24. Here's an 18 by 24, and this peninsula right here with the trees and stuff is kind of a view almost from the same place, probably, you know, 50 yards from where I was painting uh, those little sketches that I showed you. But this is acrylic, which is something I rarely do. Um, but I have either, I don't know, I've tried acrylic a number of times, but it just, I don't know, it just uh, didn't work for me. But I thought I'd bring this and show it to you. Uh, also, one of the reasons that, uh, one of the things that I think is kind of critical, let me put this away, uh, a lot of things are critical here, and one of them is, uh, you're probably wondering, when I say I'm, I struggle all the time, uh, when I've, I've listened to Dan Pinkham say that he actually knows exactly where he's going to go, and boy, that's, uh, that's something I wish I, I could do, exactly where I would go. Am I going to make this up here? Do I make this darker? Is this too dark orange? Do I make it lighter? Do I take these trees off like the original sketches seem to show? Did I sh Where are those sketches? They're right here. I just had them. Anyway, the point is, I, I kind of uh, think about what I have in front of me. Then I think about what I've got in the sketch and the photograph. And then I'm going to try to make a painting out of it. And, and it's so different than sitting and making a facsimile of what's in front of me. I just don't do that. And I, good luck to the people that do. It's just one of the things I don't do. Here's what I've been thinking about with this. These are all the same color. I'm going to make this one dark to start with. I'm going to make this one light. Uh, I'm going to end up adding a, a uh, one of the sketches had, a, or one of the photographs had a nice pine down below here, right here. This pine, I'm going to cover this area. I'm going to make it much brighter. The sunlight is hitting it. I've always liked this, and uh, and maybe I'll change this to that to kind of cover this area. And I and, and in the sketch, I've always liked that bright green that was on this side over here. I started it, and maybe that's what I'm going to be doing here. So I'm thinking about it. Uh, but my plan is flexible. It has to be. Otherwise, uh, I don't know uh, how some people can do that. So some of the things that I've talked about, some of the things I've thought about, I'd like to continue with. I'd like to continue with it because 
I keep thinking this is the right way to go. But this is my approach to, uh, this is my approach. I said I was going to make that lighter, and I certainly think I should because it's really way too dark. Yeah, remember, it's uh, thick over thin, so eventually I'm going to have to go over this with, I'm just looking at the color. Uh, is this where I want to go with this? Okay, well, I think I like that better, but I think now it becomes a point of interest and no one's going to look anywhere else except for, for that right there. Because the sun's coming from here, I've got some highlights here that I the 18 by 24 didn't have. It was pretty dull, but I'm going to, I'm going to kind of, make sure I'm following I'm using some Payne's gray here as my dark and this is the uh, this is the rock formation that's out in front here there are going to be some hard shadows but I'm going to make that much lighter here here I've also yeah that's those sharp shadows really make it that certainly implies that there's a lot of hard hard sun uh blasting on these things and uh, and that's exactly what I what the intent was let me uh yeah too white more orangey here there there Okay, enough for now. I'm gonna put, make, I've got some green down here. A lot of the rocks, of course, uh, algae attaches itself to the rocks and grows. Some of it is on the red side, some of it is on the green side. I'm going to make it a lot darker because this is where, uh, the darkest darks are down here. I've got kind of a greenish cast on mine and that's fine. But I think the next thing I'm gonna do very quickly, oh, that's too dark. Well, that's just the color I don't like. Remember, I'm gonna put that dark uh, branch of a, of a uh, it's probably a pine and not a cypress and stuff. And I said I liked one of them darker than the other. I'm gonna quickly do that to see if is my thinking, was my think, thinking right or, uh, and, and, yeah, I don't know if my thinking is right. Rarely do I know if my thinking is right, that's why. Uh, but the variables are endless. That's the other thing, that's the problem with trying to plan it completely out uh, without actually doing something and having it all in your head. I, I just, for some reason, that's just not something I'm able to do. But let me quickly do the things that I said I was thinking about. Making this lighter, making that one darker. Here, there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring that in here. It's a pine, it'll, so it'll end up having a, oh, let me first of all make the mass uh, that this is going to take. It'll come in from here, it'll be here, and then it'll end up kind of covering part of the rock here. Here, goes behind the tree, here. And it ends up having typical, these pine lumps that are kind of individual growths of a pine tree. And the places where it's going to be the brightest is on the edges where uh, the pine uh, kind of uh, the individual growths kind of stick out and uh, it'll be like here or and here yeah that's good that's fine yeah but uh, yeah, my, my painting st style is so different than a lot of people that that's and uh, but I, I don't think 
I, I don't, well, everybody shouldn't be doing it the same way, that's for sure, but I, I, I kind of think interpreting what's in front of me instead of copying what's there is absolutely right. In fact, I don't think I could do that. I mean, I've had somebody ask me once to make a, a copy of a painting, and boy, I tell you, it, I, I, I'm never going to do that again. Because, uh, and that was my own painting. <laughs> that was my own painting. Uh, and uh, so it's something that I don't like to do. I've done it, and it's been very painful. Okay, so I've covered part of that rock, which I like. I don't know if this is going to be the final of it. But, and I'm going to go nice and dark in there. I'm taking the dark green. I'm going to take a little bit of orange. Uh, and uh, some Payne's Gray. That's kind of... Yeah, and maybe I'll have some a trunk of some kind coming in here. Like so. Yeah. There. Alright, before I go on, I'm going to think some more of where I was. I've been thinking about it some more and I think uh, I am going to put, uh, instead of having this in here, I'm going to have this bright, uh, it, it's like a young pine. It's very bright. These are, these are not as bright. They're just very, very uh, powerful green right here. And whenever I'm, you've got a pine, you know, uh, with the Chinese beetle uh, making trouble for pines in, in drought-prone California, it's always wise uh, to to put a branch or two in there that are that look like they're they're failing or they're dying and stuff happens here all the time. Plus, it ends up picking up uh, the oranges that I've got here and the oranges uh, in the water over here. Still, don't know what I'm gonna if that's right for me. But anyway, uh, and I end the darks that need to go with it. To the darks where the sun is not shining. It's very dark in some of these areas. Underneath here, it's casting a shadow. There's probably a shadow like that uh, from this business here, from this trunk laying across here. But I also want to lighten it up a little bit more. And then, as you... Uh, uh, probably remembered from the uh, um, from the photograph, it had a whole bunch of uh, s branches that have died a long time ago and are now just part of the patina, part of part of what uh, makes this uh, this tree what it is. That's a little far, but anyway, here I think I'm, I'd like I think I'm. I like this even lighter. I've kept it pretty dark near the bottom because that's where the old the old part of the tree is and it's going to get dark, uh, much darker than here. Okay, um, I said I was going to do that and I think I'm going to try it. Yeah, branch is going off here there. I'm still not sure uh, if it's important for me to leave this area back here. It's something nice to look past and through this uh, fallen tree right here. But I, my inclination is, my thinking is that I want to put a, uh, something, uh, a, a pine or something dark right here. That's just my thinking, and uh, uh, but I, I think all the time, and then I change my mind. <laughs> That's part of the, my modus operandi as well. Still not sure if I'm going to keep this. One of the other things I, well, the other thing I was thinking is that instead of making this dark right here, how about end up, what if I end up with another, tr a lighter trunk? A lighter trunk that's kind of comes from here. Yeah, that's fine, but will it stay or is this again? You know, there's only so much information in a photograph, or when you're sitting there and you're making a small study, you can't include everything you'd like to include. 
And so later on, I'm sitting in the studio and I'm saying, what am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with that? Yeah, I think this green can be punched up some more too. I really do. Those are those individual pine growths that are kind of uh, have a beautiful, in fact, it even takes a little bit of thalo green, which I don't have on my palette, but I think I will do that later. No, nope, that's not what I want to do. Nope, I don't have the right greens right here. Okay, again, some nice darks need to go in here when I work on this. The front of this rock, like the back of this rock, can have and should have a little bit of sunlight on it. So it separates from the fallen tree as well. All right, and some of this stuff in the background, those rocks that I showed you the 1824 of, there are, there is lots of, there are lots of, uh, uh, there are lots of rocks that are being lit by the sun, and it looks... still have some green on my brush, but I like that. Oh, I like accidents. I do. I mean, I hope for them all the time. Uh, accidents are good. Let's see this one here, too. Highlight. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I may change that color later, but... Um, there's also a nice warm green running here. There. That's good. Sun's coming from here. Give it a nice green. Here. The crowns of those trees are going to be uh, pretty pretty warm, even though they're, they're pretty far away and things get hazy, lots of water molecules in the air here. Yeah, and again, I, I, I think once I've made it that uh, blue color and I change my mind and say I really should be more on the blue side, but we could have more light shining through it. More light coming through here. That's true. A deep blue, that's too much. I will. Yeah. There is a ground cover up there, and I'm gonna. And the ground cover is kind of on the reddish side, it's kind of here. Ah. Maybe that could be brighter. Pick up this orange by the business down here. I'm using alizarin crimson, just a little bit of it. To warm it up. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to make that lighter and take a little bit of that green out. And when I said earlier, I'm always hoping for accidents. I really do. I'm hoping... That's something I try. Um, again, uh, some people, like I mentioned, Dan Pinkham has a perfect plan of how he's going to do it, and and I don't, because I want to experiment and see what happens when I do this, what happens when I do that. And uh, but I love his paintings. Oh my! <laughs> if you haven't seen Dan Pinkham stuff. I love it. I do, I do, I do. Okay. And also, I don't want to make this too... Um, I don't want to draw attention away from here. The, the, the more interest I put in here, and the lighter the colors are, the more the eye goes there, and the forgetting that this foreground is where really I want to have people concentrate. Yeah, so I said I'm going to do this business over here, green here lighter than this uh, lighter than this pine tree here about like this color down here it's a very bright green and I like the color you could mix it 
but it's a, uh, a Utrecht painting. What's it called? Where is it so I can give you the name? Here it is. It's called the Studio Series Oil, yellow green, but it's a really punchy green. You'll see in a second. And so the first thing I'm going to do, and I probably should have, should have said that, I'm going to make kind of an outline again of where this stuff is. It's here, right there. It comes over on this side here. It's that bright green. It's continuation from down here. That's kind of my mass. I always kind of identify where is that mass. It's there. And then I punch uh, the color in. Here. Yeah. Here. I'm not going to make it solid. I'm going to leave some blue or orange coming through there. And I'm going to re-identify that rock that was behind it. Again, some of you are probably saying, why don't you just follow the photograph uh, or, the, uh, or the sketch that you did. Uh, it makes life so much easier for you. You don't have to hope for accidents. So I think this is... How I want to paint, I guess. That must be it. Here. Again, that green. Let me take a brush, different brush. The uh, trunks, very white. Yeah. Yeah. There is going to be a little dark area here. Yeah, that's good. Here. In one of the photographs, and I don't know if that's uh, one of the photographs, there's also always a lot of dead and dry grass everywhere. So it's just, do I like the shape? Do I like the color? Do I like what I'm doing, yeah, I like this green right here. and This rock business is going to continue uh, to get a little bit of attention. And uh, let me, again, I want to keep it relatively warm. The sun is shining on this. Here, here. Yeah, it's still a green, but that's okay. That's the continuation of that rock hillside right here. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to think some more. Okay, uh, I'm going to make, I've been thinking of course, and so I'm saying I'm going to make this much darker. It's in shadow, you know, uh, it's in shadow from this tree, it's in shadow from the bank that I'm standing on. And uh, one of the things that bugs me is that the water kind of comes down instead of uh, this hillside or this rock or this place where there was grass comes across here. Uh, just, bec just because I don't like things disappearing down below uh, and it just kind of looks like there's no bottom to this painting. So that's what I like. And then I'm going to take... Uh, a little bit of crazy cerulean. No, what am I taking? I'm taking phthalo blue and I'm going to add a little green to it like I did before and I'm going to darken this right here. Yeah, I'm going to darken that here. Uh, and I'm also going to darken it in the t behind here. There. Okay, well, yeah, I do like the idea of, I mean, I hadn't thought about that until I started looking at this and saying I don't like the water heading down that way. Um, and I do like this green here and this little green here with the white trunks. I think that's fine. I'm still nervous about that. If I make it as light as what I've done to the background, I, I don't think you'll even get to the background. You'll just stay right here. Uh, that's one of the reasons the dark mass of a tree or something here is something I'm still contemplating. Of course, this ends up having 
but usually I'll wait to the very end to do this, but just to show you, I'm not going to forget it. There are branches coming out of that. I think also I'm going to get rid of this and uh, put in a, a very a young tree here that's kind of going to cover part of the ocean that I've got right there. I'm going to take a little bit of turp. That's uh, gamsol, odorless. I'm going to come in here and it starts here, goes this way, and then uh, part of the branches are going to come out here, there, oh, a little bit on the other side, here, yeah, here, there, uh, and then uh, it continues and it's going to get a little bit of a crown of here, yeah. Does it bother me that it stops right there? Yes, so I'm gonna go a little higher. There, that's kind of what I was thinking. Here, there, and then pop in some right nice deep greens in places. Again, here. Okay, still kind of don't like what's going on down here. Why don't I like what's going on down there? I don't know what it is, but sometimes you know, it doesn't have to all be explained. I say that all the time to the students who uh, are listening. I don't really have to have everything explained. If, you're, if people say, geez, what the heck is that? Or what is that supposed to be? If it works with color and design, I, I don't really care. I really don't care what it is. Yeah. Okay, well, I put a little color in there and that's okay. Okay, uh, I've got to think about it some more and then I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm going to uh, go in here and I'm looking at it like I do every time I come back into the studio and there are obviously things that uh, that aren't working well there's no separation here I've got to make this uh, I'm, I've got to make these two masses the water and this rock um, separate uh, I don't like this round curve this round curve right here it seems like it's a repeat and so what I'm thinking about is I've got to make this different, totally different, so that it doesn't repeat this mass up here. It just doesn't look well. It doesn't feel well to me. Uh, I think I'm going to go more in the shadows toward the blue. Uh, I think that uh, the end, of course, that the, uh, the, the separation between the water, and I want to make that a, a more defined mass. I keep wondering if this is too far out and whether I should be going back into this area, but for now, that's okay. I also, um, I've kind of been fooling around with this, this mass here. They used to be closer together. I've made them come, separated them. Um, and I'm still not sure what, I, I don't like what's going on here either. Still wondering about this business over here, but as I'm working on it, uh, some of those things are resolved by me trying something and then saying, yes, that's working, or no, it's not. So let's start off here by uh, doing some of the things I've talked about. I've got to get in here. And like I always uh, suggest, uh, please uh, make, an, uh, make a design, make a design. Is that where I want it? Of course, that line didn't have to be that unbelievably fat here there's some hard shadows in here too all right now that I've got some dark on my brush I'm going to use it anyway um, so let me uh, put water in behind there I'm gonna use cobalt blue a little bit of green, too much green, more cobalt. 
Certainly are, and I'm certainly going to make these lighter than uh, the similar rock formations in the background. So here we go. Yeah. Same over here. Same over there. Again, I want to make the locks, the rocks lighter than the, not all of them, of course, but some highlights on here are going to be lighter than this business back here, than the rocks in the background. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Something has to happen down here too. I don't like what's going on. And when I don't like something that's going on, boy, gotta change things. Yeah. Well, it, it just you know, I, I'm adding color. I'm adding things that. Uh, may work or may not, but that, it doesn't seem to, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. I'll go over, you know, I've gone over this area. I'm going to go over this area again and again until I'm happy with it. Uh, and like I said previously, some people are able to kind of design it and follow through on it uh, from beginning to end without making alterations. But I, I have to constantly, I'm constantly... I'm making changes and the reason is I don't like what I just did it doesn't work for the painting it may be it may be that the tree is exactly the way it's shown or the way it is in front of me but that doesn't make any difference I don't want to paint it like that and because I don't I, I uh, again that's the point the point is reality is what I the reality in front of me is not what's the most critical thing my reality is what's important. I, I want this tree to look like this, not what the tree uh, looks like in front of me. I've got to make it my tree that works with this painting because, uh, of course, sometimes there, are, oftentimes there are objects that are just perfect for what you want to do, and sometimes not. And that's the difference between just copying something or making a facsimile of something that's in front of you with uh, changing it to fit your particular feeling about this this particular painting. All right, I'm going to go back in here, like I said, and uh, lighten the value down here. There. Okay. thinned out this mass a little bit. Is it better? Don't know. Uh, don't know yet. But uh, I'm going to go, uh, let me, sh I want to go, go more Viridian in here. It certainly separates now. That was the object. Yeah. All right. It separates just like I said it needed to. And that makes me feel better. All right. I said I was going to go more toward the blue in that area back here. And uh, I've got some phthalo blue, adding some of that. Uh, that that uh, Winsor Newton red light, which is really a very deep, deep red. Let's see, where was I going to go with that? Here. 
shadows toward the blue. Okay, I'm gonna make it a little, a little more transparent so that it doesn't look as solid as it is. I wanna. More transparent just means that it is just not a solid color. Yeah, like I had it. Okay, maybe too many shadows there now, but that's, I'll go over it again. I'm looking at it. And, All right, let's see now. Where else would I, I was going to go? I'm still not liking this particular uh, tree and I don't want to just send it off the top without any foliage up there. And, and, uh, and the reason for a little bit of foliage is to stop the eye just driving right off the painting. And uh, yeah, I mean, my, I'm going to go back in here and uh, darken a little bit underneath here. So again, so it's the rock uh, is having some, or this grass or this knoll or whatever it is, ends up having some shadow lines and some highlights down here. It isn't all the, the same, uh, it isn't all the same value and it's not all the same color it ends up Here. All right. And I'm wondering if I can go more toward, um, because a lot of the trees at Point Lobos have this more toward the blue gray. Still that dark that I've got now. Yeah, I like that too. Even though in the original photograph, it's almost black. And uh, in my studies, it's pretty damn dark here too with uh, going off the top, but that's a study. Yeah, anyway, so I like that for now. Again, I wanted to separate this and I want to make this more into rock down here. And so I'm taking some of the colors that I've got on my palette here and uh, yeah, here, yeah, something that's dark down there. Again, that's too, too light. I think it's getting too light. So I'll come down with that just a little. It's actually not bad, but I, I'm going to come down just a hair, ultramarine blue, and uh, it's a nice light uh, red from Winsor Newton. Okay, so just to highlight in a few places, you know, like here, here. All right, I like that better for now. For now, I need to have even a darker separation and, and not because it's I need a separation but because it is dark uh, right where the water is, con is constantly uh, playing with the rocks or whatever is there there's a real nice dark area there all right okay all right, let's see, what else? I said I was going to go back into this uh, business here. Again, I'm gonna mix up uh, some ocean color, some, uh, a um, blue with a little green in it, and then I'm just gonna 
run it next to that trunk so it's a little so it's a it's better defined is really all I'm doing better defined yeah More green. And again, I may be taking out too much of that uh, pollen sack or whatever it is. But uh, I think I showed it to you on the print. Let me show it to you again so you remember. See it right here? Right there, it's pine needles, probably from dead trees. It's repeated over here. There's a bunch of those pine needles back in this area as well. And I like how, and that trunk that goes across, got a lot of green and yellow on it, moss, or as it's starting to decay, that's why I kind of like this, but I'm gonna go a little bit lighter on that trunk. Yeah, I'm trying to mix up the color that may will make me happy, but that's a tough thing to do too. Yeah. The lightest tree is this one over here. So I'm gonna go back in and uh, lighten it up. Always, uh, my strokes are not always up and down sometimes, especially with things that are round and they're circular. Um, I'll make my strokes, strokes horizontal. All right. And this one is kind of disappearing. And so I'm going to go back in, especially in areas where it's dark and uh, just indicate a little bit of a light on here. Okay, and you know, then I get to the point in uh, in my in, in designing or finishing a painting where I keep going over this similar areas, but I've got to be convinced that this is as good as I can make it, and so it's it's one of the I keep thinking, well, I can do better than that. I can make this a much nicer tree or a much nicer something. And uh, and then I keep going back into it and mm, sometimes it doesn't work at all. And of course, as some of you know, you can ruin things too. Yeah, I think I need to go darker here. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. It's not too abrupt. All right. I like what I've done there. I like this. I could use some more of that right up here. That's the wonderful green uh, from Utrecht. Yeah, I like that. Those are the individual little crowns that those pines have, those Monterey pines. Yeah, I don't want to overdo it here. That's another pitfall, of course. Oh, if one stroke looks good, three will probably be three times as good. I like that. I'm putting some of those in this Monterey Pine as well. Okay. And the much brighter, lighter green will be uh, right here, which is new growth it's also yeah really punch it up yeah i think i'm gonna put some of that green down here too where the plant it's, it's probably the thing that's fell over there's probably a new uh a new start of a monterey pine here. Yeah, I like that. I like it for a while and then 
all of a sudden I'm disgusted with it. And remember I had these things in here yesterday? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're gray. In this case, it's got some green on it. That's working fine. Okay. One of the things, uh, I mean, I like that there's now separation between the rock and the water down here, but I still believe that some of the areas uh, in here can be made darker. And uh, it's not just a black, it's a dark color that I mix with a blue, like a, uh, I don't know, a ultramarine or what else do I have here? I've got a thalo blue. I take a little bit of green, a little bit of that light red, which is actually a very heavy dark red, which I like, which I've been using. And then I go back in here and uh, darken up some of these areas. Because there, if the sunlight's coming from the right here, it's going to end up making this light and there'll be ca shadows cast here and, and everything will separate nicely. That This trunk will separate nicely from the trees, from the tree branch or the tree trunk that's really laying across here. Uh, and it goes everywhere. I mean, those they separate automatically because they're almost totally white. And there, yeah. Yeah, that's good, probably more. And then again, you know, like I said yesterday or the day before, you've heard me say it, if one bright branch is good, three of them are better. And that's not always the case, but anyway, I think the transparency here of making them go back a little bit more they're not as solid as this right here. And I th keep thinking I could do more with that. Uh, thin it out some more, give some, give a little bit of structure to this. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's not like that. Yeah. I think the tree in the background here seemed to be in conflict with one another. Yeah. Don't want to define it too well, because if I do, uh, I won't like it. <laughs> I don't like defining things too well. I like there to be a mystery about it. I want the viewer to say, Geez, I wonder what that is right there. Yeah, if I explain it all too clearly, I'm not happy. Some people have to do that. I feel I don't. Yeah, they're all about the same, so I want to go back in here and lighten up some of them. Maybe a portion of this up here. Uh, this, uh, I like making that, oh, and there'll be some darks in here. I mean, as these forms kind of fall around, one f part of the form is going to be in shade, so I can't have it all that same bright green that I've got. Some of it is, has to be in the shade, so there'll be an area here, here, that's in shade. And so we want to put some, a little dark in there too, a little, some darks. Yes, I can use the dark greens, but they've got to be made nice and dark. I mean, dark enough to work with. It's not black, but they're, the relationship between the value of the highlights and the shadows has got to be uh, correct as well. And then once I've gone in, I usually go back and decide, yeah, I need to punch it up a little bit more, the highlights, and uh, here. And again, the form is uh, the form of the mass, this area here, 
highlight back here, it ends up defining it pretty well. Here. Yeah. yeah, that's good. This should be a much darker, darker, darker green. And the reason for that is, it's, it's, uh, this is a young plant and the older ones, even though they're, they're a bright green, uh, at the very ends, at the tips of these new Monterey pines, uh, but they're much darker than the green over here, so I want to make sure we have the right relationship. This is a, a branch from a larger tree, what have you, so it's not a new growth. And even if it were, I wouldn't want to make these two greens identical. I wanted to, I want to be sure to separate them. One of the other things that I've been looking at, and it's bugging me, is um, is that that this is almost a silhouette, which I like here. Here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I could have a smidge of color on the top. Here, I think that's fine. Uh, all right, I'm going to do more with the sky. It's still a gloomy day. I think adding some blues and uh, some kind of a strata, of, uh, something that'll make it look like it's the middle of the day and it's nice and nice and bright. The reason for punching up the things that are close to me here. Uh, I think that will work. And then I'm getting close. Er. I'm getting closer, closer to the final. Uh, what else can I do with it kind of a thing? Now, this trunk, these are crossing. I think I'll leave this one behind. Or will I? Oh, I, see, I don't know yet. Will I do that? Will I put it over the front of this rock? Uh, or is it behind? Anyway, I don't know. Does it make that much difference? Yeah, I keep thinking that, you know, the relationship between this floating floatsome and this tr dead tree right here. Yeah. You know, I'm thinking, but I'm not talking. It's kind of not that easy to do both. Anyway. Okay. Well, I kind of like where this is going. Uh, it's better than it was when I started. And I'm glad I decided to tackle it one more time. Yeah. 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 Make this ridge a little more transparent and that the light goes through the tree and you can actually see part of the rock behind it. There. Okay, I still don't know what I'm going to do with this. I'll think about that for a while. I still think I can use, I'm going to get a really small brush and make some more of these uh, trunks that are kind of leaning into things and all over the place. It'll add some interest. Yeah, I'm much happier with the value of this now. The color is about right, too, and it, the separation is so nice. Yeah, there's something here that bothers me, but for now, I'm just going to look at it for a while, and then I'll I'll do, uh, I'll finish it, I hope. But then again, it's never finished, because I look at it on the wall a month from now, and then I'll find something I need to take care of. But that's how I work. Well, let's see. Thought I liked this tree better when it was more of a silhouette. 
and uh, there, kind of like that. And I was punching up the water. Am I done with that? To make it a tail. There, let's see. It's here. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I wanted to work on that, uh, this pine right here on top. So I've got to do something with it. I can't leave it like that. So. Instead of having another tree with lots of greenery on it, I think I've decided to just put branches in there and put a little bleeper of a little bloop bleep of foliage like right here. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's okay. When I have a value here and this little trunk that's broken off in the background I will automatically lighten it up just so it separates separates everywhere here could be rag background too but that's fine okay A little bit behind it. There. Yeah. A little bit of phthalo green in that area. Just a little where it gets, well, it gets really translucent and you end up having kind of a yellow bottom and a, and a blue. to go darker down here. I've got a little bit of it back here too, just a smidge. There, I've put back that. That floats them, whatever the heck it is. All right. Oh, I was gonna fix that left tree there. I've gone, brushed in my blues and, uh, and now really, Need to go fix this or finish it. Yeah. Some more orange. And which I've already brought that up. That boy, I tell you, when you all the pines up there, and the beetle is active there as it is everywhere else. The Chinese tree beetle. So, and even if it isn't the Chinese beetle, it is, uh, it is always good to put a little bit of orange in things because you know there's a branch with some bright orange needles on it that is, uh, well, it's ready to fall off. So putting that, putting that on there, it's too orange. I'm going to go a little green on the back side here. fell a couple of days ago and it's still pretty vibrant but uh, once I, I sign off here I'm, I'm sure I'm going to be looking at this I'm sure I'm going to be looking at this and saying mm, do I really need that is this too punchy right there maybe so I have added a couple of little trunks here just to see some verticals underneath that crown up there. But basically, I think, uh, I, plus I need a frame for it too, so I'm going to be busy doing that. 
So just another shadow line just gets hit. There's a shadow underneath there. And if it's not, it's another stick or something that's um, kind of duplicating this mass right here, this, this fallen tree. I'm going to stop right here. Oh, I've got, I had green in here. Uh, and I've kind of got to, to overpainted it. That's too dark. I was going to go a little lighter. Yeah, if I. That's going to be too light, but let's see if I. There. I think I'm not, you know, <laughs> you know, I'm going to go into it. I'm going to go back and work on things that either I think I, I, do I, I guess the question in my own head is, do I make it more uh, closer to reality? And I, I don't think I do. I think what I'm doing is making a shape with the various colors in it work with the various colors, you know? I mean, uh, that's really, I think that's the object. I'm almost 99% positive. Yeah, I like this orange it brings up down to here. Is that part of the rock? Mm, nobody knows, nobody, I don't really care. Uh, so, I think that's, I'm gonna stop here. Sometime soon I'm going to sign it, and uh, that'll be the end of it. But uh, it doesn't mean I'm not going to look at it some more and decide that this mass or that color needs to be uh, a different color or a uh, different value. So that's the kind of thing that's going to be plaguing me from now on until it sits in the frame and uh, is on its way to a gallery. Probably the Carmel Fine Arts or the uh, Portugal Gallery in, in uh, Montecito. One of those will probably really like this there. Yeah, uh, I think uh, I, I can't stop, of course, because my stuff is never, ever, ever done because I keep seeing things that could be made better. But I do like the light blue that we've put in here. Uh, I like the idea of having just a small crown with a bunch of branches. Um, yeah, uh, the darker, darker green down here is fine. This green is much uh, less brilliant. It's very dark green, but uh, here we've got some really bright new growth. You know how green that stuff gets. And uh, I'm gonna say this is it. And hopefully the frame will end up uh, making me real happy.